right, so good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone from wherever you are. So I would like to welcome you to the third session of the second day of the UNS FinTech Summer School 2020, organized by the UNS FinTech Center in collaboration with the International Office of UNS and the Faculty of Economic and Business uh, Universal Plus Maris. I'm Aldi and I will be your moderator for this session. So first of all, this session will discuss about the module six. It's more about the whole bank setup with the FinTech via digital banking. As you might notice that uh, FinTech has impacted the numerous applications and revolutionized uh, the way consumers access their finance. In sum, FinTech has changed the future of the banks leading into the emergence of digital banking. So what is exactly happening with the digital banking is uh, it converts the traditional banks into a more efficient place to operate in which banks have a greater chance to compete, adopt, and even collaborate with FinTech. For today's session, uh, our, invi our invited instructor will be Dr. Tastastian Rizvandi. So Dr. Tastastian Rizvandi, thank you for joining with us. But before we start the summer course, I would like to remind you first about the several things that you need to follow during the course. First is the student can participate in this session. If you have any question, you can and the question as well. And you can also use the raise and feature if you want to give a live question to our instructor directly. And secondly, please turn on your video during the class and change your Zoom name into the format student ID underscores your name. Student ID for the summer school can be found in the file of the student list that we have shared to your email. And the third, student have to fill the attendance list when, it, when I request all of you to fill it. Use your summer school student ID and what module you are joining now. So for this module, you need to refer to module six. And the last, for further, in, for further information, you can refer to UNS FinTech summer school booklet that we have shared before. All right, so for this session, let me introduce you our instructor. Uh, his, his name is Dr. Tastasian Rizvandi. He holds a PhD from University of Limous, and he is now currently serving as an assistant professor in Faculty of Economic and Business, University of Plus Marat. Uh, he has already published several papers in a reputable journal, such as Economic Modeling, Pacific Passing Journal, and Singapore Economic Review. So to Dr. Tastafian Rizwandi, you have around 45 minutes to an hour. So the time is yours. Thank you, uh, my friend Aldi. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for Aldi for introducing me. And uh, my name is Tastafian. Um, I'm one of the teaching staff in Universitas Blas Marat and today I would like to also say thanks for the UNS FinTech Center for inviting me to share um, the knowledge with all of the participants here and well I hope that we can discuss later on and to have more insight, to have more knowledge about how, it, how, how digital banking uh, could shape the environment of banking, especially in Indonesia. And, and um, I have to say to all of you that, um, well, I know that not all of you are from Indonesians, so if you have some specific question for Indonesians, so um, for, for non-Indonesian, probably uh, we'll, 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 we'll prepare later on the answer. So, uh, of course, because uh, in Indonesia, uh, what we already know, our research is mostly in Indonesia. And actually, if we see that uh, Indonesia is the is one of the country with the big population with uh, approximately 260 million, so the internet penetration is very high. We will discuss later on about this. And now, to start with, let me uh, try to share my screen. Wait. Okay, so uh, the title is How Bank Adapt the Fintech as uh, assigned by the committee to me and we will discuss about uh, the
Okay, we will start by the definition. Well, of course, I know that all of you already familiar with the term of digital banking, but but maybe probably uh, some of you haven't uh, still still have some confusion about what uh, is there any differences between uh, mobile banking, digital banking, and internet banking, and so on and so on and so on. So we'll discuss about this. So if we see from one of the paper published in, in the academic, uh, academic journals, so we uh, uh, digital banking refers to the use of technology to conduct banking transaction in a smooth manner. So this is this this term is quite different with the digital payment. So digital payment is any type of payment using digital instrument. So we could say mobile payment, mobile wallet, cryptocurrency, and electronic payment. So uh, as we see today, the digital payment and digital banking, uh, it's already uh, already become part of our life because by using digital payment, by using digital banking, so we we could have the more convenient living. We could have more effective financial transaction, and we could do everything from our smartphone. So uh, the development of digital banking and digital payment, so it is the thing that we cannot avoid. And also from banking institution, um, we will discuss later on that uh, the banking institution uh, it's a need for them to develop the products, to develop their services that is uh, comely with the uh, regulation, but also they have to uh, have to have more focus to make their banking services. Uh, become digital and can be accessed anywhere because today bank, banks is not about the place where we can store our money when we can transfer our money but banks is more about uh, activities about uh, how we how, how we interact uh, with others from our smartphone and then when uh, when we see uh, in the more deeper so digital banking, we, uh, there is three, uh, it could be categorized as three. The first is electronic banking, the second is internet banking, and the third is online banking. So, uh, well, actually, those three is almost uh, similar one to other and only have several uh, differences. Okay, so the, the next question that is very, uh, very interesting to discuss with all of you is that why banking goes digital? Well, uh, probably yesterday you already uh, received some material, the instructor already delivered some, uh, some insight about, about the peer to peer lending, probably, or about uh, the development of uh, internet in Indonesia. Apart from the Development of smartphone penetration or others. Well, there are several reasons that is we could obtain from the academic journal about why banking currently they are going digital. Okay, we start from the first. The first is that well, actually, as a people, we uh, currently we are starting to. Uh, feel comfort if we are using the smartphone we could ask for uh, for ourselves how many how many hours we spend uh, our time by holding our smartphone i'm sure that most of us is more than three hours per day i'm sure that uh, especially for youngers like you uh, maybe it's more than five hours per day so it, it means that we are feeling comfort we are feeling that uh, by by uh, by using our smartphone, we can have a joy. We we, we can uh, maybe feeling happy and, and and so on and so on and so on. So, uh, Chungur and Metzner, 2019, 2020, uh, they published uh, uh, academic research in final research letter. Uh, they find that an increase of people and household comfort with new technologies, financial literacy, high education, and overall transparency, uh, it become a three force. Uh, from banks to uh, develop their product because the banks, most of them, they know that people they already come up with the use the use of a smartphone, so that uh, they start to develop products that can be accessible from everywhere, from any time.
Okay, the second reason uh, why bank goes digital is that because um, actually this is about the penetration of information and communication technology. So, um, and in in some extent, then they don't have any choice. Probably like like uh, five years ago or ten years ago, they can have a choice whether they want they would like to be digital or they want to stay digital. Or if if we see from the banking activities, uh, if they are commercial bank, maybe they have a choice whether they they want to have income from fee based lending or most of them for uh, from conventional loan. But in the uh, in the current era in this last choice because the penetration of technology is very high and then um, they don't have any choice rather than also following the development of the uh, internet they use or the uh, they they don't have uh, they don't have any uh, any choice rather than to develop the digital banking that they have to serve to their customer so and and uh, if we see from the research, actually, and probably uh, some some uh, banks, they also see from the publication, from the research, information and communication technology, they have a positive role in improving banking profitability and stability. Well, actually, we can see here that uh, when we see the digital banking as a as a new channel of obtaining customer of obtaining uh, uh, customer funds, um, we we uh, in in some extent they, they can generate a new revenue for a bank itself. So that's why uh, the Gaudio et al. They find that information and communication communication technology they have a positive role. So meaning that banks, if they uh, apply information and communication technology in the more higher extent, their stability and profitability will be also higher. And also they find that the overall financial stability in the banking industry is enhanced with the intensive adoption of both IT and financial technologies. So meaning that, for instance, if in Indonesia we have uh, like uh, around 130 or 150 commercial banks, if most of them they apply information and communication technology, so uh, in overall, based on the research published in the uh, in the journals, the stability and profitability will be also increased. So it's also it's uh, so actually it is better for the country as a whole. And then uh, the last reason why banks they are trying to apply information technology or apply digital banking is that because this this part is about the country culture. It means um, in Indonesia, Indonesia is one of the country with the very rich culture and. Um, the culture itself, in some extent, they are become the promotion of the country itself. So, if the promotion is uh, is delivered using the smartphone, so in some in some extent, to some degree, it could influence consumers' perception and intention toward mobile banking. So, so in some extent, the country in the culture, uh, sorry, the culture in the country, they can also uh, become the trigger for the people to use uh, mobile banking or to use digital banking. So those three is uh, several reasons that I'm also sure that you can find more in the uh, uh, in the newspaper, in the on online media, or in the uh, academic journal about several factors that trigger banks to use digital banking in my opinion use uh, in my opinion uh, overall banks they have no choice bank they have no choice rather than they have to apply the digital banking services in their uh, 
Okay, now we are talking about the current situation. And in here, um, well, we will talk about the worldwide and then uh, after we will uh, talk about the Indonesia. So the Indonesia, Indonesia consists of like 260 million population. So it's uh, fourth largest in the world. And from uh, the, uh, 260 million population, 171 million is internet users. So let's say that uh, if for uh, you guys, if you are from outside Indonesia, you see that it looks like the Indonesia is very big market for for the internet. Indonesia is very big, uh, very big market if people want to invest something in the technology. So this way, if you see, we have uh, in Indonesia now we have several like unicorn or decacorn. We have a Gojek, we have we have a Oppo, we have a, uh, some others, uh, some others unicorn. That most of them, uh, most of them, although they originally owned by Indonesian company, but now many investors from outside, they are trying to uh, give a fund, give money to the startups. Probably because the market is very huge, the market is very high, and this is like, have a, uh, will if, if people people invest in in this in this uh, big market so probably the the profitability will be also very huge okay now we move to the digital banking previously we might um, we may expect that digital banking will only be offered by commercial bank. Well, it's if, if commercial bank they offer digital banking, it's a must. They they don't have any choice, as we discussed uh, previously. But now, not only commercial bank, even some. Uh, uh, technological company like like in there uh, there is a logo uh, of grab red hailing application and then alibaba who doesn't know about alibaba and then xiaomi one of the mobile phone that is become the favorite for the for the students well when i was student i also used the xiaomi and i still have maybe uh, xiaomi mobile phone but i didn't use anymore and uh, this three, this three is not a commercial bank. This three is this. It's only a technological based company. Well, we see Grab. Grab is like a Asia, but actually they don't have any. They don't have any uh, car. They don't have any motorcycle. Okay, and and also the others. Most of them they are. They are a technological based company, but now because the digital banking promised several uh, huge profitability in the future, people predict like that. So it's not only commercial bank to start offer digital banking services. Grab, Xiaomi, Alibaba, and Indonesia also Gojek is also uh, thinking to offer to offer uh, digital banking. So Grab, Xiaomi, Alibaba, uh, several months ago, they also pursued to offer less license from Central Bank of Singapore. So imagine, if if you are if you are uh, if you are an owner of if you are an owner of Grab, so for sure you have the data of all of your customers when uh, where they access the uh, the application and then at what time and how many uh, how many how much money they have in their wallet and etc 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 all of the identity of their customer you have it so in the context of the uh, in 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 this situation so it would be very interesting if you also offer to them banking services you already have your customer 
you already have all of data all of the data of your customer and it looks like that you build a new bank and you already have customer there you don't have you don't need any promotion you don't you don't need to spend more and more money to to promote your product you already have your customer so that's why the digital banking is very sexy for several uh, 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 fintech or several technological company okay okay in indonesia actually uh, indonesia is also one of the country that will probably indonesia also don't have any choice but indonesia also one of the country that is uh, supporting the development of the digital banking in 2018 they have issued one of the regulation formal regulation and this regulation is issued to encourage commercial bank to adapt with the current situation by offering digital banking services so actually it is the regulator it is the uh, ojk or indonesian indonesia financial service authority that uh, say to all of bank indonesia to develop their product to develop their services to be more digital to be uh, to be to be more accessible to consumers and uh, from five years until now so far it's only uh, in Indonesia that have comprehensively implemented digital banking so now we we try to look at uh, the case study of bank BTPN bank BTPN if you are uh, I'm sure uh, most of you are from Indonesia and you say that bank BTPN is, is bank tabungan pensional national bank tabungan pensional national and actually uh, the this this bank is if we translate to english it's like bank for retirees retirees so meaning that this bank for the people who already uh, already retired from their work and sometimes they still have uh, some deposits they want to take their money they they want to take uh, the money uh, uh associated with their pensions and so on and so on and so on so um several years ago as you see in the picture this is what usually we see we see in the branch of btpn so many people offer there they want to uh, take money they want to take the pen uh, their, their their pensions and and etc very very long queue and now after um, bank btpn is uh, transformed started in 2015 head of the exam banking btpn they said that btpn is changing and transforming because society is also changing so the bank feels that um, it's not banks that should change but the people they already change they don't want okay if, if we see from the from the previous picture most of them are uh, retirees most of them are old people but now because in indonesia most of the population is is uh, active worker so they are uh, younger so and the young people they are like to hold smartphone in the more 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 time so btpn feels that they have to change why because the society itself is also changing and uh, the btpn feels that technology offers new opportunities for the banking business by transforming the business into digital banking we extend alternative channel for customer that will increase customer experience and reduce operational cost in the longer term so i have uh, i have discussed with several of my friends that they are worked in the bank and this they said that uh, currently 
the management they don't hire people to fill the position in the teller or number of brands is is uh, the growth is zero so the bank they don't open the new brands but then uh, most of the fund in the in the bank most of them is allocated to develop the technological things related to the digital banking and etc so from from this thing it means that in the longer term it will reduce operational cost because if people they can access everyone from the mobile phone so they they don't need any uh, customer service anymore so they don't need to go to the bank so the branch is well well will, will not interesting anymore because if we go to the bank we have to make a queue and then we have to spend time it's not time efficient so uh, this is what BTPN thing in the five years ago and now uh, the BTPN they have like uh, product the name is genius genius is indonesia but in english it's genius so it's it's only different between g and z and but the the mean is similar so genius is not just a banking product but it's like an assistance in your smartphone that offers new way to arrange your personal finance so in my experience if i want to send money for instance uh, uh, no, no, I, it's it's not me that wants to send money. For instance, if 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 my if my friend Aldi want to send me money and I need money, for instance, so Aldi have to type in the smartphone my account number, and I'm sure and I'm pretty sure that Aldi will not remember the uh, my account number. And Genius offer a new way. No need to input the account number just using the name. For instance, in here there is a, a the sign of dollar. So, for instance, dollar plus of yen. So, just uh, send money to the name type. So, it's it's one one way to uh, uh, one of the one of the part of innovation in sending money. And then, for instance. Uh, imagine if we are having a lot of money, and then uh, we want to we want to have we want to have like a saving account, saving amount, saving money, and it's like for instance 50 million in the in the next three years for instance. So we just type our winning in our genius account and then the genius will calculate how should we save daily for you how should how should uh, how should we save our money in daily basis so they will calculate and automatically will they will uh, use out the debit in our account and then uh, the kind of bank deposit but it's more and more efficient you don't need to go to the bank you don't need to make a queue and we can do everything from our smartphone and actually the, uh, this product is the first one in indonesia that we can op uh, open an, a, a banking account without coming to the bank branch Okay, um, well, reaching this kind of uh, achievement actually is not easy, and they need a lot of uh, the bank BTP and they need the huge amount also. So uh, their investment from 2015 until 2017, they spent almost 236 billion or approximately uh, 50 million US dollars. It's very huge amount, actually. It's very huge amount. If we compare, for instance, they want to hire uh, uh, or make a bank branch or hire the customer services or hire a teller. Actually, uh, they don't need that use of money. But they feel that by allocating this 70, 36 billion, they can reach uh, uh, several stages. 
forward rather than other than and what they obtain after that one year after they transform to the digital banking 61 percent of their net incomes increase so meaning that it's just one year after that people all, uh, become become very very uh, interested with the genius so they want to open their account without coming to the bank is kind of uh, innovative way uh, to deal with banking activities okay so next how about the future of digital banking maybe yesterday you already discussed if if we if we are uh, if if we are discussing about peer-to-peer -peer lending and uh, how about the future of finance maybe some of us already think that in the next 30 years in the next 20 years maybe there are no commercial bank anymore because people if they need money for their business they can go to uh, they can uh, open the application or are, are uh, going to the website of one of the peer-to-peer -peer lending platform and then uh, borrowing money from there so what about the digital banking how is the future In the case in Indonesia, well, as I said previously, probably in this in one country and another country it could be different. So one country they can be very uh, very advanced in terms of implementation of the digital banking, but maybe uh, not not that so advanced. So in the case of Indonesia. For instance, we, we take a sample of Bank Central Asia. The number of transactions in brands, actually, it's very, very little. The number of transactions, it's only 1.8%, less than 2%. Imagine, it's less than 2%. So, meaning that people now, most of them, they are using mobile banking services. They are uh, they are using banking. Uh, sorry, they are uh, accessing banking products for from their smartphone. But but it only constitutes around fifty percent of the total amount of transaction. So um, many people they still likely to go to the bank because uh, if they want to send money in the big month, for instance. Uh, above 50 million rupiah for instance so they like to go to the bank so some of them they still afraid if they do if they transfer money through their mobile account if it is a big money they still afraid if uh, something errors happen for instance the internet connectivity is not good and then uh, if they access from the from the laptops for instance if the electricity goes down and so on and so on and so on so for that reason probably uh, bank central asia as a sample the number of transaction is only approx uh, only 5.8 percent but it's only 50 percent of the total amount of transaction so the number is the number of online transaction is very high the number of offline transaction is very low but the amount is still around 50 percent so meaning that the brands is still needed in the context of indonesia and then the last uh, i would like to cite the statement from anjan trapor he is one of the most uh, very popular uh, economist from the United States. Peer to peer lending will not replace bank anytime soon. Well, we are talking about digital banking, but if we if we put our context in the peer to peer lending, it would be also similar. Peer to peer, lend, peer, -to -peer lenders will not replace bank anytime soon, but they will take some market share away from banks when banks are capital constrained and for borrowers who do not have collateral to offer for secular funds. Yes, it's true. If people they don't have collateral, they have a low profile of uh, finance, so they, they couldn't go to the uh, commercial bank. 
and if market plus flanders make a significant inroads it's likely that bank will either launch their own platform acquire a uh, uh, platform and our partner with and then volume okay so Okay, so this is the last of our presentation. So time, uh, I will give back to the moderator. I hope we could have a good discussion. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Tastafian Deswandi for your presentation. So, we still have quite a lot of time, so I'm going to open the first Q&A session. Uh, for this first, uh, I mean, you can submit your question directly via Zoom chat box, or you can use the feature of uh, raise hand in Zoom if you like to address the question directly to the instructor. So for this first session, I'm going to choose the first three questions that has been addressed to the instructor via Zoom box. The first question is from Apparently, the, the person said the same name like me. So it's from Aldi, Indonesia. So hello, Mr. Tastaftian. I would like to ask you some questions regarding the digital banking. So according to my research currently, digital banking is emerging technology that potentially allows banks to interlink and collaborate with fintech firms and third-party providers, uh, for example, like e-commerce. In the open banking sim, applying open AL, APLS, application programming interface, technology in order to give bank a customer a better experience in using financial services. So first question are, what is the concrete role of digital banking? And then how does the, the digital banking allow banks and fintech firms to interlink each other to give the customer a new experience? And then what is the potential legal issues of the digital banking utilization in the collaboration of banks, fintech, and the third party provider? So, Okay. Um, okay. Thank you for the first question. Well, the the first question is that what is concrete law of digital banking? So actually, we can we can say that um, in in some way the digital banking they set how, uh, they set the culture of the people how they interact with banking services in some extent but in other extent the the, the development of people who platform in the daily basis how they interact with the internet every day it also become the trigger for the digital banking uh, sorry, it becomes the trigger for a commercial bank to uh, form a new way of digital banking either in Indonesia or, or in other countries. So the concrete rule of digital banking is that um, they set the new way of the people to interact with the banking activities. The second question is that how does digital banking allow bank and fintech firm interlink each other to give customer a new experience? Well, actually, the banks now they can offer several uh, several products. If we see from the genius, for instance, the, the genius they offer a new way of creating account without coming to the bank. They offer a new way in transferring money to our friends or to our relatives. They they uh, offer a new way without going to the financial export. We can manage our own money. So it uh, it's several several examples that um, experienced 
experience that consumer can obtain if they use the digital banking services. And the third question is that uh, what's the potential legal issues of digital banking utilization in the collaboration of bank, fintech, and third party providers? Well, actually, uh, the digital banking services or the digital banking utilization in Indonesia is already regulated by the uh, Financial Services Authority. So, uh, well, of course, if everything, everything related to the to the technology, everything related to the uh, the use of technology, always have several potential of. Uh, misuse and ex and etc. We can we can remember that several several uh, months ago, when there are when there is uh, no electricity in Jakarta, so it's kind of the end of the day because people they cannot do uh, they cannot transfer money. Even they cannot take money from the ATM because ATM is electricity and there is no electricity, for example. Or we can uh, we can also um, see from the case Bank Mandiri, one of the big uh, biggest bank in Indonesia. Uh, several several months ago, we see that uh, many people they make a tweets in, in Twitter and they say that their account uh, suddenly becomes zero. So they are afraid that their money get lost because actually uh, it's, it's different from today and, and, and several years ago. Several years ago, if we have like, like one, one, 100 million rupiah, we can or we can put it in the bank, in the bank account. If we put it in, in the bank account, actually what we have is it's only a number of zero, 100 million rupiah. But if we if we put it uh, in 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 our home, we can see the real of the money that we have. But but now if everything goes digital, although. Uh, the OJK or Financial Services Authority, they also make a protection about the uh, about the customer database and etc. But some people in Indonesia are still afraid that something could be happen. Okay, I think this is my answer. All right, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lisandi. Uh, I hope it answers the question from Audi. So moving to the next question is from Putri from UNS. So, the first question is, in your opinion, why the NFC payment is not massively used in Indonesia than the QR code payment? And is it more related to the equation or culture of Indonesian people? Uh, because I see in some countries like Seoul, Samsung Pay becoming one of the major players of digital payments, so that's Kakao and never. The second question is regarding the digital banking. So paying cooperate with big tech company to increase their market penetration in digital economy or will they survive the way they are now in developing their businesses? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Adi. Uh, first, regarding the NFC payment. Well, in my opinion, it's, it's about uh, the use of technology itself or or the current situation of technological development in Indonesia. Well, we see that not all, all of the technological development can be accepted in most of the countries. And if we see, uh, although Indonesia is one of the uh, one of the highest smartphone users in Indonesia, but I'm sure that most of the smartphone they use they don't have a uh, feature of nfc so meaning that uh, because because of most of them they don't have these features so they couldn't they they, they couldn't uh, couldn't couldn't use it to uh, for nfc payment and indonesia even qr code qr code qr code itself indonesia is still in the in my opinion, in the uh, first phase, first uh, step of adapting themselves with the 
with the QR code. Most of them still like to pay with the uh, fiat money. Most of them, for for instance, myself, uh, usually if 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 I want to go shop to the mall or to usually is that I go to the ATM first and then take money and I use the money for the payment. Usually it's like that. Except if we are if we are uh, if 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 we are likely to buy something from the from the uh, uh, online shopping online shopping mall for instance uh, usually we we pay using a transfer so from from this situation from this situation none of them need the NFC payment so uh, in my opinion this is one of uh, the most important reason this reasons why Indonesia uh, didn't really uh, become the use of NFC payment. The second, regarding the data banking, so bank cooperate with big tech company to increase the market penetration in data economy, in data economy, or will they survive the way they are now in developing their business? If we see from the case, if we see from the case of uh, Bank BTPN, Bank BTPN become like now is because uh, the Sumitomo Group in Japan they uh, put their money to Bank BTPN and become the largest uh, shareholder. So because uh, it is the largest shareholder, so they can. Uh, influence how banks should do, how banks should adapt with the current situation, and therefore, well, it's one of the example that commercial bank, if they want to increase their market share, of course, they have to collaborate with other banks, or probably they have to collaborate with the big fintech company, or probably they have to search uh, looking for a fund from the fintech company. Okay, this is my answer. Thank you very much, Dr. Respondi. I hope it answered the question from Putri. Uh, moving to the next question is from Tria, from Unstrat. Based on the data you presented around 66%, or around 171 million people in Indonesia. Uh, they are using the internet, but now every users are actually using the fintech or know for the fintech. The question is how the banks are actually use, utilizing this number to promote or innovate the fintech in Indonesia. Okay. Okay, my data is about one, uh, 171 million of Indonesian population is using the internet, but not every user are actually using the fintech or not about fintech. Okay, yes, this is actually, this is the fact. This is the fact that uh, all of us Indonesian are faced. Um, even though the users of smartphone but if we see from the application that they access every day, I'm afraid, I'm afraid that the application related with the financial planning, related with the banking activities is, I think it's considered very small. I think, I think, in my opinion. Well, uh, I, I, I had the data, but I forget where I put it. If, if I have time, I will, I, will, I will look later on and I will share to all of you. Um, from from the from from what I see in the in in the daily basis in every day, all of, most of the people they they have they have the smartphone they can access internet from everywhere, but still, most of them they have finance they have still relatively low financial literacy. So in the smartphone, the application is most of them is the social media application like Facebook, Instagram, or others. Or because I live in the I live in the village, most of uh, and people in any age they already have smartphone. Most of them they have application like uh, TikTok and then uh, the 
the game application and and little of them they have an application that related with digital digital banking or financial literacy so actually this is become also become the uh, the obligation for Indonesian financial services authority and also for Bank Indonesia to consistently promote to all of Indonesian uh, citizens about the importance of data banking about the the is the the easiness of using uh, banking services from the smartphone and etc etc so i think it is it is it is the the duty of the regulators in indonesia either bank indonesia or uh, authorities desa keuangan thank you thank you very much dr respondi so how we answer also the question uh let's open the second uh, station of the q and a session I'm going to choose randomly a question that has been submitted through the zoom box uh first question will be from Seoul, Nigeria. This is quite an interesting question. Of course, when we know the old ways or traditional ways of doing banking relationship, there is always a meeting between the the uh, the person from the banks and the customer itself. So now with the emergence of the digital banking, how can the digital banking handle the limitation of lack personal banker relationship? So it's yours. Okay. Um, Mr. Adi, what, in, in, in your opinion, what, what does the mean of personal banker relationship? You mean that the, uh, the interaction between the... In your opinion... Yes, it's more, it, I think, I think it's more, more about the, the relationship between the banker itself with the customer itself. Yes. Well, actually, um, for me, in in my opinion, uh, digital banking they offer something something easy. They offer something unique. They offer something accessible to everyone. But uh, in some extent, in some extent, when people are willing to talk directly, digital banking couldn't do this kind of thing. For instance, I'm sure that all of you now already familiar with Zoom, with Zoom application, or with uh, online teaching, or with online conference, and etc. And this, this, I'm sure that this uh, didn't happen in the uh, six months ago, or a year ago. But uh, if you want to meet, really discuss with your friend in some extent it's very difficult if we use the online platform like this in in my case for instance i'm now in indonesia and aldi mr aldi now is in france so actually the speaker should be aldi not me <laughs> no I, I i mean that uh, when i want to talk something very very specific it's very difficult even if i can see him i can uh, hear his, his, his voice but um, in, in some extent it's very difficult usually if we if, if I if, if I and Aldi uh, I can meet uh, together and then uh, drinking some coffee and then talk it's much more convenient rather than we do it uh, through the online and I think that digital banking is also the same. In some extent, it couldn't replace the interaction, the direct interaction between between the uh, between the customer and the banking staff. Although, usually in in the application they they are uh, live chat, but the live chat it's not really live. We should wait maybe one hour to have a reply, maybe one day. And uh, last time I have I have some question and I ask uh, privately to uh, to one of the bank to the Twitter. And when I and interestingly, when I ask through the Twitter, why through the Twitter? Because because I I want to have the quick answer. When I asked to the Twitter, and then the 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 Twitter uh, of 
some kind of bank, they answer me, they reply, please, please send email. So, meaning that sometimes it's really better if we can go to the bank, we can interact with the, with, with the banking staff, we can... Um, so, have uh, try, try to get solution from them but some people need something faster something efficient something uh, accessible everywhere so i think either physical bank or digital bank as i said in the powerpoint the digital things they can replace the physical things in the near time but I don't know in the next 30 years probably, but now currently still the uh, the physical banking services is still needed. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Sandy. So moving to the next question. Uh, how could the digital banking help the mid-low economic class? I mean, uh, will it be very effective regarding the middle-low economic class? They are not very familiar with the uh, Kind of typical advanced technology. So that's a question from Alan Risky. I'd like it to you to answer. Okay. Uh, well, I think it's almost similar, almost similar to the experience of the peer-to-peer -peer lending. In the peer-to-peer -peer lending, it's usually it is intended for the people who cannot get access from the bank. But then people who cannot uh, usually escort and paint people, they can go to the peer to peer lending. They can go the to uh, go to the marketplace of lending, and then they can open lending from there. Uh, in the in the case of digital banking, in my opinion, because smartphone smartphone now is owned by most of the people in all over the world, so when people they are using smartphone meaning that they have a greater chance to uh, to to access banking products for instance i am from from a village and uh, the bank branch is very far from my house so if i can access from my smartphone so it's way better rather than i have to spend time spend money if i have to uh, go to the bank it's better if i can access from my mobile phone and i'm sure that uh, the digital banking itself it can increase uh, it, it it can increase the number of people that previously they don't have any and any banking activities with the physical bank but after digital banking is introduced in the society and the citizens i'm sure that uh, most of them they will likely to adapt their daily life with the services from digital banking thank you all right thank you very much i hope it answered the question as well so let me choose another question question about uh, customer data protection it's from kaira from Indonesia. So I heard you mentioned about the customer data is one of the factors of the collaboration of banks with non-bank fintech institutions. Can you explain more about that? And how are both parties benefited from the customer data and how do they guarantee the protection of such data during the collaboration? So it reminds us about the case in Hong Kong, if you remember. Well, during the Hong Kong protests, people are queuing in the queue line uh, for and and they avoid to try using the digital payment because they they are afraid that the government of China they will use that kind of data to see and to look who goes to the protest and who's not. So maybe there is some kind of relation between this and the question also. So it's, I leave it to you to answer, Doctor Iswandi. Well, actually, if you want to answer, I'm also okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, I will answer and then after that you uh, you have to add uh, some insight. Okay. Um, I'll take some insight. <laughs> but okay. 
from customer data and how they guarantee your section of such data during collaboration. Okay. Um, the data now is the most one of the most important things that people could use to uh, analyze something and regarding to the data of the banking uh, of the customers imagine that we have a database of the customer of the Gojek or customer of the grab in indonesia so from that what we can do is that um, we can we, we, we can now for instance people in in solo for instance people in solo in such black market uh, actually what products they usually uh, they usually buy in the afternoon for lunch for instance or in the night what product that usually most of people in solo they buy just from this trend we can make a new business we can make a new business that uh, well predictably it would be needed for people in solo and from from that uh, from from that example means that the data itself is very 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 important and also actually uh, there is a regulation but i i couldn't mention the number of the regulation but there is a regulation about the consumer protection in indonesia about the data sharing so uh, in in my opinion in my opinion so for all of us who wants to uh, who wants to have access to the of the digital banking so what we could do is that we have to really read the term and condition so whether our data will be shared to the others platform or only in that banks so i think it's my answer so Adi, you can add some explanation no of course i leave it to you uh, i hope that answers the question as well from kaira regarding the digital uh, customer uh, data protection. Uh, so let's move to the next question. Uh, this is from Yuka. Uh, he would like to ask, what is the first good step for a banking company that are trying to enter the financial technology and digital banking? And how exactly to build the trust, uh, customer trust in this kind of uh, uh, relationship in digital banking? Okay. Um, wait, wait. I'm. Um, who is the name? Yuka. Yuka. Yes. Yuka. Okay. How is the first step for a banking company uh, to enter financial technology and digital banking? Of course, the each bank uh, they have to calculate. They have to calculate how much they spend to the investment of the banking. If we see, if we see from the case of um, from from the case of bank BTPN, so they spend almost uh 760 sorry 700 billion or uh, 50 million us dollars to develop or to transform their bank become the uh, digital banking so uh what usually banks should do of course the first things to do if they see uh, whether they can do it or not i mean that how much money they have if we want to if they want to transform their businesses and whether they are able to do that or not or whether they can get the financing from other banks for instance so i think it depends on each bank and and it depends also uh, in, in what level they want to offer digital banking services for their customers i think 
Okay, uh, the second one is that uh, wait, wait, wait. how to build customer trust in digital banking. Uh, digital banking is usually support, is about the application. It's about the of the product. It's about uh, whether the application is accessible for for everyone. It's about uh, the easiness of the application used for everyone. So it means that if digital, if, if a bank, they want to offer a digital banking services, to my opinion, they have to create a product or uh, technically an application that is really friendly users and with a good interface and uh, with a very clear, very clear uh, explanation about how to use that. Okay, I think. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Sandy, for your answer. Um, let's move to another question. Uh, this is a question from Malaysia, it's from Outreach. Uh, the digital banking is growing and might replace some humans' job. So, what's the new job opportunity might be emerged from the people working in the banking industry? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, who is the Outreach? This one, this one. Okay. Uh, could you repeat? Uh, the question is, the digital banking is growing and might replace some human's job. Uh, what, the, what new job opportunity might be emerged for the people working in the banking industry? Okay, I, I, didn't find, I didn't find the question, but actually the answer is, um, well, if, if now, if now uh, you, you are students in the undergraduate, for instance, in the, in the undergraduate, uh, undergraduate level, for instance, so never think if you want in the future wants to be a customer services in a bank or willing to be a teller in a bank. Because in the next several years, probably uh, what they do will be replaced by uh, services from the digital banking or from the application. But if you still really working in a bank, so what, what you can expect is that you develop your technological expertise in any ways, in, 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 uh, in any field, and then uh, try to think which part of the bank that will still be uh, remain. I, I mean that uh, because almost all of the banks now they are transforming. Well, of course, in the different level because of the different fund they have. But but for sure they are transforming. So what you guys can expect is that. Don't choose any job, any, uh, don't expect that you will work in the field that predict uh, several years, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope this answers the question. Uh, there is one live question that will be addressed to you. So please, uh, committee, uh, please give an access to Shah Ren. For the last question. Uh, hi, Pak. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I'm from Malaysia. So you mentioned that uh, in earlier presentation that Indonesian banks are trying to reduce the number of branches, right? But yes. some, but some of the previous studies they shows that number of banks could lead to efficiency. So what do you think about this situation? Do you think the result would be contradict? In the future, do you think it will lead inefficiency or efficiency? Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for the question. Well, actually, the efficiency itself is not always related with the number of ranges. 
efficiency is not always related with the number of bank in a country because uh, each country uh, they have the different number of banks in Indonesia actually uh, the government is already thinking about to make the number of banks simpler I mean the number of banks become reduced in the uh, uh, just just probably if, uh, less than 50 50 banks in Indonesia but actually it's not a, an easy task to do if we see from the Indonesian culture, people like to have something uh, more than one. I, I, I mean that uh, the government uh, have tried to merge some banks, for instance, all of the state on bank, they want to merge in the one, but actually uh, in, in order to be more efficient, but then uh, in fact, it's so, so difficult. And also, the government have also tried to merge the several uh, step on Islamic bank, but until now, it's also difficult to do. So, what I'm thinking is that um, the number of branches they are uh, decreasing, but but I, I I didn't say that it's really decreasing, but it uh, it it has like a zero growth. But I think. From my explanation that I that that I uh, explain in the in, in my slides, people still need the physical banks. People still need to go to the banks to ask something, but the digital banking will become an alternative for the people who want to have something easy if they want to access a banking product. Okay, I think it's my answer. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Ishwandi. I hope it answered the question as well. So let's move to another question. Is there anyone who wants to, to also last question address directly to the... Uh, let's move to the other question. It's from Irdan from Universal of Gajah Mada, Indonesia. So Indonesia currently does not have the personal data protection law. This issue is so important as the security is vital in a financial institution. And there are many cases of personal data leaked by FinTech. For example, recently it's the credit plus. Yet the public is not really intrigued by, by it. So why is that? Is it because personal data awareness is still yeah? And why the government officials don't address this problem more? Thank you. Okay. Uh... I'll try to answer. Well, actually, regarding the data, because I said that it is very important for everyone, and if and big data is already now become a major issue, because from that we can, we can uh, analyze something that it could it, it could help us to make a several specific decision or strategic decision. And then the question is that why still there are uh, cases of personal data leaked by FinTech? Um, this is the thing that actually we face in Indonesia, although there are already law of customer protection, but um, Indonesia is one of the country that if we see from the data, for instance, the data of uh, law enforcement that is compiled uh, by government at all, if we see from the data, Indonesia or, or you can also see from the from the website of the World Bank there is a data and then uh, from there there is index of law enforcement. Indonesia is one of the country that have uh, low 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 level of law enforcement, meaning that uh, if people they have they have uh, several several issues about. Uh, uh, about the data, so they are afraid that they they couldn't they couldn't uh, protect the data, and if they go to the police, it it wouldn't help a lot. So meaning that actually this is uh, not only not not I I think I think it's not only problem of the. A digital banking only problem of fintech, but actually it is a whole problem of the country. 
if in some extent this country indonesia can make sure that the rate of law enforcement in is high this kind of problem will be dis will be also disappear thank you all right thank you very much so let's move to the other question it's from Joe Mandy from Ivory Coast. So he said that I heard from your presentation that tech companies like Alibaba, Xiaomi can get license from the central bank to operate. Can you tell more about the fintech regulation? Can the tech companies provide the same services like the traditional banks, for instance, like borrowing money or, or an extra extra? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, yes. If if we if we if if we already use Alibaba, for instance, we we, we buy something from uh, Alibaba, and then if there is a there, there is a service there is a e wallet from Alibaba, there is Alipay. In addition, also if if we if we shop through the website like a Shopee, there is a Shopee Pay, and then even the Gojek and Grab Grab they have Ofo, and then uh, uh, Gojek they have GoPay. If we only see from that, actually they already collect that collect data and collect fund from the customer. So meaning that uh, this IT company they already uh, collect customers money. So this has become the focus of the regulator. If they, if they didn't regulate in the most specific manner, uh, this kind of thing will be, will, will, maybe will have a contagion effect in the future. For instance, uh, the Indonesia, they didn't regulate how should the e-wallet be formed. How should uh, IT company, they form a, uh, wallet if if indonesia didn't regulate this it will it uh, the the consumer maybe will have less trust to the in that company and of course if the uh, for instance a fintech company they have already the permit from the central bank to offer digital banking services of course they can collect more uh, from the customer as a deposit. They can operate like a bank, maybe as a subsidiary of the company. They can operate like a bank. They can have a deposit and they can uh, lend to the people and ultimately, because they already have customer, it will be very profitable for, for them. Thank you. Thank you very much. So next question is from Nigeria. It's uh, from Onyekachi SDK. So Nigeria remains a large, uh, debates a largely caste-dominated society, primarily due to the limited financial literacy and lack of financial infrastructure. So currently, more than half of the country's total population remains outside the purview of the formal banking system. How can exactly we promote financial inclusiveness and thereby encourage the electronic payments in our country? So I leave it to you, Dr. Isfandi. Okay, thank you. Uh, what Indonesia did in the last 10 years, the first is that uh, the regulators like the central bank and also the financial services authority or even Indonesia deposit insurance corporation give a lecture about, about the, for instance, about the uh, inclusion or something like that so from from that uh, from, from, from that activities for sure the students the people in the active uh, workers maybe or the people uh, they, they they can engage with the current situation of the uh, finance in Indonesia so what the Nigeria can do in my opinion is also the same the company sorry sorry the government they have to promote their their uh, anything related to the related to the, the development of the finance in, in nigeria through the school through the lecture or uh, uh, using the other media and the second um 
actually the government should also uh, develop the infrastructure because for technology company in infrastructure is a must well infrastructure is not always a physical things but infrastructure about the database infrastructure about the uh, connectivity and etc okay, thank you all right thank you very much uh, dr Isfandi. is there any other question that you are going to address directly to Dr. Rizvandi, you can still use the Zoom chat box if you want to address a question, ask a question, or or you can use the raise hand feature. Uh, another new question is from Patrice Coco from Ivory Coast. Do you think the digital banking can be efficient to stop the issues of money transaction between African people on the Africa land and those abroad? Regarding the problem of cyber attacks, which one? Who? Uh, Patrice Coco. Okay. Do you think digital banking can be efficient to solve the issue of money, money transaction? Money transaction between African people on the African land and those abroad regarding the problem of cyber attack. Well, for this question, because uh, this is using the African sensing, so. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't answer this because uh, what I know is uh, currently is uh, what happened in Southeast Asia, especially in Indonesia. Maybe the other? All right, perhaps maybe you can uh, elaborate what happened. I mean, the way Indonesian government trying to tackle the kind of cyber attack issues, cyber crime issues. With the recent cases, if you remember in Indonesia, I mean the credit card, credit card cases and you know, sorts of sorts of stuff related to the. Yeah, well, if we take the issue uh, generally, um, of course, the digital banking because they are uh, more sophisticated rather than rather than uh, uh, the classical banking style. Of course, the the issues of uh, money transaction or cyber attack will be also very high. But the Indonesian Financial Service Authority in the context of Indonesia. So, uh, of course, they are already providing some rules about the security of the data of the customer in order to uh, protect their customer, in order to protect the data of their customer and also the fund of the customer. So, I think it's like that. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Isfandi. That's the end of the Q&A session. Uh, thank you very much for the wonderful presentation. Um, so before I, before I end the session, I would like to remind to all of the participants to fill the attendance list, as well as do not forget also to mention what module you are in. In our cases now, we are in the module six. So the committee will share the link for the attendance list. And this is also the end of the class, also the, the end of the course for today. Uh, our gratitude is addressed to Dr. Isfandi. Thank you for you. Uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge based on your experience and expertise with us. I hope uh, you have a good day today. Thank you very much. And also, I would like to remind the participants as well that tomorrow there will still be a class for the next courses. It will be transformation, uh, transformation in digital payment, uh, peer to peer lending and fintech application in small medium enterprises and home industries. So thank you very much for joining the class today. I hope every, uh, I hope all the best for all of you. Uh, don't forget to fill the attendance list once again, once again, and see you tomorrow. Bye.
Thank you.